Okay, I think we can get started. Great, thanks, Joyce. Um, uh, well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome, and uh, thank you for joining uh, joining us this evening to share your thoughts and uh, and feedback uh, on this our first um, Van Aken Bikeway uh, public meeting. The city is very excited to grow, continue to grow our existing network of uh, bicycle facilities and creating um, uh, critical connections between our very successful Van Aken district and future bike uh, facilities planned for what we expect to be equally successful, uh, our Lee Road uh, corridor project. Um, in particular, we look forward to developing uh, these expanded pedestrian and, and cyclist uh, transportation options with, with all of you. This phase uh, of the project is focused on planned development and it provides you uh, an opportunity to share your feedback and ideas uh, regarding the information that will be presented tonight. So again, thank you so much for joining uh, um, as we work together to improve bicycle and pedestrian connectivity and safety throughout the city. So thank you again for, for joining us. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I know this is a little bit late on a weeknight. Um, this is a really important topic. So we're excited that so many people have already joined this virtual meeting. Um, my name is Drew Parker. I work for Tool Design and the city has hired us to help with this project in the plan development phase. Um, and Tool Design is a consulting firm that focuses specifically on walking and bicycling projects. Um, so I'll give you a little overview here of what we're going to do today at this meeting. Um, we'll start with some introductions and project background. We'll give a presentation on existing conditions. Um, we'll talk about some design possibilities, and that'll take about 30 minutes. And then we'll break out into smaller groups, and that'll take about 30 minutes. We'll have in-depth discussions in smaller groups where you get a chance to provide a lot more input. Um, and then we'll come back as a large group for a little while to just kind of debrief what was talked about in the groups so everybody can learn from everybody else in the group. Uh, but before we jump into that, I wanted to launch a, a live poll right now just to kind of see where folks are coming from, um, like what neighborhood you live in. So Anna is going to um, push out a live poll that you can answer. So just give you a minute to, to click on that. There'd be a few different options. Awesome. You all are very fast. OK, um, so it looks like we have 31 percent of folks live on Van Aken Boulevard. Um, Zero percent of folks live in the Van Aken district, 15 percent in the Fernway neighborhood, 4 percent in Lomond, 8 percent in Sussex and 19 percent, 19 percent in other Shaker Heights neighborhoods and 23 percent outside of Shaker Heights. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you all for participating. So you've got a good mix of folks um, from different parts of the community and some folks outside of the community. So just I, I want to start with some project team introductions here. I mentioned we're, we're tool design and we're supporting um, the city of Shaker Heights with this project. We also have WSP on our team, which is a, a larger um, engineering architecture design firm. Um, and they're supporting us in this project. And they're the ones who have been leading the Lee Road action plan. So they bring a lot of great knowledge to this project. So I'm going to start with the presentation that gives an, an overview uh, of where, where we've been and where we're going. So the, the project area that we're studying is Van Aken Boulevard from the Lee Road corridor to the west to the Van Aken district. You can see that on the map here. So far, the project team has developed a vision and goals for the corridor in tandem with a, a steering committee, and we've completed our existing conditions analysis, looking at different data about the corridor and what's going on. Um, so where we are is is here at this public engagement event number one, which this is the virtual version. There's also going to be an in-person version, version a week from tonight at the Van Aken District. Um, so from here, we'll move into a feasibility study and work on some design alternatives, see what options are feasible, and then ultimately develop a concept design um, for the preferred concept and put that into a final plan. And then the goal is to move that 
into a future project to design and construct a bicycle facility on Van Aken in 2024. Um, so there'll be another steering committee meeting after this one, as well as another public engagement event later in the process, probably in the April timeframe. So just as some background, um, we want to talk a little bit about citywide goals and the project specific goal here. So as far as citywide goals, the, the one that this ties most closely to, I think, is the environmental sustainability goal that you can see on the screen. And that goal is to educate, advocate for, and support the environmental, economic, and social sustainability of the community in partnership with our residents and businesses to meet the needs of our entire community without compromising the resources or well-being of future generations. So providing bicycle transportation options um, really ties in well to that environmental sustainability goal. And then specifically, when we get down to the level of this project, we think that the project specific goal is to create an all ages and abilities bicycling connection between the Van Aken district and the Lee Road corridor. Um, and when we say all ages and abilities bicycling connection, what we mean is a type of bicycle facility that anybody would feel comfortable riding on, not just uh, a specific subset of folks that are very confident bicycling, but um, folks who may not be as confident bicycling, younger people, older people. So that's our specific goal for this project. We also wanted to provide some citywide demographics. So you can see here, this is most recent census data. Um, on the left here, you can see the age of different people in Shaker Heights. And we have 20% of folks are over 65. 17% um, of folks are aged five to 18. And so that really ties into that concept of wanting to build something that works for all ages. Uh, car ownership, there are 5% of households in the city of Shaker Heights that don't have access, access to a car, and about 25% that only have access to one car. And so those folks need more transportation options besides just motor vehicle transportation options. Um, and then we also included race. The, the community is primarily um, white and black, um, but there's also multiracial folks Hispanic and Latino folks, um, Asian folks, and, and others in the community. As mentioned, as the mayor mentioned, there's a couple other projects going on in the vicinity as well that this project ties in nicely with. So uh, on the west side on Lee Road, the Lee Road action plan is is almost complete. And that that project will have a is proposing a, a really nice bicycle connection, a two-way cycle track north-south on Lee Road that could connect into the Van Aken project. Uh, and then on the east end, the Van Aken District Public Realm, that's an ongoing project that, you know, looking to enhance the public realm in the Van Aken District that ties in perfectly with the goals of this project as well. And just some background on previous plans, the uh, 2016 Van Aken District Connections Plan recommended a 10-foot wide multi-use path along Van Aken Boulevard. So that's something we've taken into consideration. Um, the Lee Road Action Plan, as, a, as I mentioned, proposes a two-way cycle track on Lee Road, um, but it also recommends enhancing pedestrian crossings at the Lee Road and Van Aken Boulevard intersection. So where our project ties in with that project will be really important to make sure we have a nice, comfortable intersection crossing. Getting a little more specific into Van Aken Boulevard and the, the existing right-of-way and cross-section, there's really two character areas. So there's a, this this typical cross section exists um, from Farnsley Road to Parkland Drive, and so what you can see here is you have six foot sidewalks on either side of the street. You've got the RTA running down the middle. Um, you have a really nice wide tree lawn, a fourteen foot tree lawn on either side that has really beautiful large old growth trees. Um, you have on street parking on both sides, and then you have two through motor vehicle lanes in either direction. And then in some places you have the RTA parking, the head in angle parking. So that's one one typical section of that that area. And so that's kind of what that looks like. Here's a photo of one portion of that, just looking at um, Van Aken westbound. You can see the parking on street parking lane, two through lanes. This is the RTA parking over here, the beautiful trees and, and the sidewalk over here, and then you have residences in the background, and then down. At the end of the street, you've got the Van Aken district off in the distance. The other typical section is the rest of the corridor on Van Aken. So from 
Parkland Drive west to Lee Road. And in, in this instance, there's no on-street parking. Um, you still have the six foot sidewalk on either side. There's a, it's a little bit narrower of a tree lawn, but still has beautiful trees in that tree lawn. Um, two through motor vehicle lanes, and you, know, you still have the RTA running down the middle. And then in some places you, you have RTA parking as well. And so that's what that section looks like. So you can see you have some beautiful, beautiful tree lawn um, and the two through lanes going through here. And, and the the mayor mentioned at the beginning connections and network connections for bicyclists. There's already a new multi-use path um, on Farnsley at the east end of the project that connects to the Van Aken district. It runs along Farnsley Road from Van Aken um, over to Warrensville Center Road. So that's a great opportunity to connect into that nice existing low stress facility. And then there's great transit as well. And we know bicycling and transit really tie together well. Um, folks can ride their bikes to transit and e expand their travel shed and their ability to get further uh, on transit. So there's, of course, the RTA blue line, but there's also bus routes in the vicinity, um, the 14, 41, and, and 40 that run on Chagrin, Warrensville, and, and Lee. And then as part of our existing conditions analysis, we looked at some crash data. We looked at the last five years of crash data that's pretty typical to do for a transportation project. Um, fortunately, there's very few crashes involving pedestrians and bicyclists along this corridor, but there are a couple. Um, there were, at the Lee Road intersection, there were two crashes involving pedestrians in the last five years, one crash involving a bicyclist, um, neither of which resulted in serious injuries or fatalities, so that that's um, we're fortunate for that. And then at the Farnsley Road intersection, there was a crash involving a bicyclist that resulted in a minor injury, but fortunately not a serious injury. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Miriam to talk a little bit more about bike facilities. Thanks, Drew. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Miriam. I'm an engineer with Tool Design. Really excited for this first public meeting. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the different kinds of design possibilities and bike facility types that we might want to see on Van Aken. Um, the slide has the seven types listed. It might be a little overwhelming and some of them sound really similar, uh, but we do have a slide for each of them. So I'll get into that. Uh, and then kind of the important thing to keep in mind is that the first three that I'll talk about are what we might call conventional bike lanes, um, where it's basically just paint on the road. So there's nothing physically separating the bike lane from the travel lanes. Um, and then the last four that I'll talk about are what we would call separated bike lanes. And so that just means that there is some sort of physical object in between the bike lane and the travel lanes. So this first one is a painted bike lane. Um, I'm sure everyone has seen these before. It's probably at least five feet wide, we would hope. Um, and it's normally on the right side of a roadway. Uh, so most people only feel comfortable using this conventional bike lane if the traffic volumes are under 3,000 vehicles per day. Um, we got traffic counts from two months ago now, and the number of vehicles on Van Aken Boulevard is between 9,000 and 13,000 per day. So it's a lot higher than this 3,000 threshold. People also typically feel comfortable in a painted bike lane if the speeds on the road are kind of low, so 25 miles per hour or under. Um, and as you guys know, the speed limit on Van Aken is 35 miles per hour, uh, with plenty of people going a little bit over, like around 40. The next kind of bike lane, this is very similar, um, but another position for this bike lane is that it could be next to or in between a parking lane and a vehicle travel lane. Uh, so this maintains curbside parking, uh, but doesn't really make the bike lane any more comfortable for people biking in it. So it has kind of the same threshold for level of comfort, 3000 vehicles per day uh, and speeds equal to or under 25 miles per hour. So this is another option that would be easy to implement, but not comfortable for a lot of people who might be interested in biking. 
And then the last one in this group of more conventional bike lanes is a buffered bike lane. Um, so here there's just a painted buffer in the road between the bike lane and the travel lanes. This buffer is usually at least two feet wide and it might be a little wider. Uh, this makes it slightly more comfortable uh, and people will feel comfortable using it. Usually if the volume of vehicles on the road is less than 6,000 vehicles. Um, so like I said, on Van Aken, you have about between 9,000 and 13,000. So we're still not under that 6,000, so it won't be comfortable for most people. The next few that I'll talk about are separated bike lanes. So that just means that there's something, some sort of physical object um, in between the bike lane and then where cars would be driving. So this first one is a separated bike lane with flex, flexible delineator posts. We kind of just call them flex posts for short. Um, you may have seen these before. It's definitely among the newer kinds of bike lanes, I would say. Um, but basically it takes the buffered bike lane concept and adds this vertical post in the buffer. They're not necessarily like very protective for bicyclists, but they visually communicate to drivers that you can't or shouldn't be driving in the bike lane. And it's comfortable for most cyclists. This next one um, is kind of similar. So in this case, it's a separated bike lane with a parking lane. Um, we also call this a parking protected bike lane. Basically what happens is on a roadway that has curbside on-street parking, we basically move that parking lane over a few feet and then put the bike lane in the curbside area. And there is a buffer in between the bike lane and the parked cars so that people aren't like opening their car into the bike lane. Uh, and this is comfortable for most people. Another um, thing that I like about this option is that it does provide the ability to create some accessible on-street parking spots, which don't currently exist on Van Aken. Um, but all that means is that with this, with this design, you can have like a loading space area for cars if they need it. So if someone's like in a wheelchair uh, or uses another mobility assistive device, you can have this like buffer space where they can unload or load that. Um, and then ideally you would also construct curb ramps going up to the sidewalk on Van Aken and have a little crosswalk to help those people uh, cross the bike lane. Um, we have two options left. This one is a separated bike lane with a concrete raised island. Uh, so a little bit similar to the flex posts. Some people do prefer like a concrete raised island over flex posts because it's a little more discouraging to drive over, I would say. Uh, so that adds a certain level of comfort. And again, most people would be comfortable using this kind of bike facility because of the separation from the travel lane. And then the last option that we wanted to present to you all was a two-way separated bike lane with flex posts. So this is very similar to the separated bike lane with flex posts that we looked at earlier. Um, but in this case, like the bike lane itself is twice as wide to allow for two directions of travel. So whereas all of the other options you like would construct that bike lane on both sides of Van Aken, a two-way separated bike lane, you would only construct it on one side. So a lot of people or most people will feel comfortable biking in this bike lane, um, but it can be less intuitive, especially at first, to kind of figure out that like even if you're going east, you might need to be on the westbound side of Van Aken or vice versa. And it can also make intersections and driveways a little bit more complex because drivers need to be aware that they need to check for bicyclists in two directions. This is a summary slide of the options that I just talked about. I know it was kind of a lot, um, but the three kind of conventional bike lanes uh, were the painted bike lanes, so with no buffer, the buffered bike lanes, that had a buffer between the bike lane and the travel lane, um, and then bike lanes in between parking and the travel lane. And then for separated bike lanes, 
We talked about concrete raised islands or concrete barriers. We talked about parking protected, so where the bike lane is curbside and then cars park next to that. And then we talked about a separated bike lane with flex posts and a two-way separated bike lane with flex posts. So those are some of the options that we're thinking about for Van Aken. Um, and of course, we want to hear from all of you about what you would want to see or what you would feel comfortable biking in. So I'll pass it back to Drew. Thanks, Miriam.